Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. It's the CBS All Access original series, Star Trek Picard. Season one, episode five, entitled Stardust City Rag to all of my returning subscribers. Hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, kick your feet up as I give a recap of the entire episode with photos offset to the side. What? an amazing mid-season episode with a huge plot twist. I'll give my reviews in the comments below. It's all coming up next. <laughs> it's Bunny. The opening scene flashes us back to 13 years ago on the Seven Domes on Planet for Guessing, and we hear drills and someone being tortured and screaming out of agony, clearly not under any anesthesia, and the person that's taking out parts and drilling and popping out things, trying to take out certain parts. They're demanding, where is your coronal node? Where is it hidden? And he can't answer because he's in so much pain and they continue to go on as if it's not causing him any harm. As the camera pans out, we can see that this is somebody associated with Starfleet. As the torture continues, we do see Seven of Nine. She comes to the rescue and she can see all of the damage that's happened. And she tries to tell that individual, I'm gonna get you out of here, it's gonna be okay. But he holds her arm, an endearing grab, letting her know that I am surpassed the level of saving. He's saying, please leave. Don't worry about me, just try to escape and she's shaking her head because she knows in these moments that he is severely damaged and she hugs him and we see that she goes for her taser and she wants to put him out of his misery, misery. and she has the taser next to his body and when she shoots she says I'm sorry my son and she shoots him only to get out of this painful traumatic experience. We then cut to present daytime, but two weeks prior. And we see that we are at Stardust City, and there are a lot of people in an area listening to music, enjoying drinks. And someone goes up to a lady to let her know that Bruce Maddox has been spotted. And she seems as if she's trying to figure out how to handle this situation. And she lets him know, go ahead and kill him. And then she takes back her statement and says, no, 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 don't kill him, bring him back to me. So then we see Bruce, he's in an area trying to collect his thoughts and she has drinks as if she's gonna talk to him and console him in some way. And Bruce is very taut. He's in this moment to where you can tell he's been hiding, he's afraid, and he lets her know, I've been hiding and they've destroyed everything in the lab. They use some type of solvent to just dissolve and destroy it all. And and he's just gonna keep hiding, but he doesn't know how much longer he can hide. It seems as if this woman is trying to be helpful, but you can see the deceptive energy. You can see it all in her face. And she asks him, who did this to you? Where are you running from? And Bruce says that I think it's the Tashliar. I think that they're the ones behind this. And as he takes the drink, we can see that it's done something to him that makes him collapse. And she says, hmm. Making a deal with the Tashiar is painful, but it's gonna be worth my while. And after this scene, we see the show's opening credits. Seven of Nine joins Picard in his chambers and she wants to know, Picard, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be on some diplomatic mission? Why are you here in the area near Free Cloud? He updates her on everything that's going on and why he's out there, somebody's life is at danger, and he knows and he has an idea that she's been doing ranger work. And she lets him know that she is doing any and everything to help people that are in need. And Picard says, no, you're taking the law really into your own hands. And Seven of Nine reminds Picard, what law? 
what are you speaking of of law remind me of that and he says i digress and he's thinking you know that's a logical question what law and she tells him picard i know that you have a way of doing things but after so many things happen there's not a lot of us especially rangers who are out there trying to help those who are in need we have people who need us now and if you want to call it putting the law into our own hands, fine, so be it. But it's something that she feels very strong about and she asked him to just pour her a glass straight up of bourbon. Picard lets her know that this mission is really important and having her there, the energy there is great, but he wants her to know that there's no ill will, there's not any negative feeling behind that. And she seems as if she wants to help and continue this mission with him a little further. Rios wants to talk to Rafi about why is there this Borg Ranger in the chambers with Picard speaking with him? And as he's asking this question, we see that Rafi is looking on the screen kind of researching someone named Gabriel Wang. And as Rios is coming to into the room, it's evident that she doesn't want him to know what she's looking at and she dismisses it from the screen. And she tells him, we don't have anything to worry about. If Picard has an idea that he can trust her alone in a room with him, then he'll be fine. And Rio says, well, yeah, you know, I keep forgetting that, you know, she used to be a Borg like Picard. And if you're an audience member, if you're a Trekkie, you have an idea of this. If not, this is something more that you'll have to research as the season goes along. But I will put my thoughts in the comments, of course. But we have that happen. They kind of feel a little bit more settled about it. Rafi is still in all of her thoughts and we're st we still have that mystery link lingering of who she was looking at on the screen. So later on, we see that the crew meets at the front of the ship and they are experiencing the different kind of advertisements and layouts from free cloud rios rios is used to it he's just punching them off to the side and ignoring it picard is being super nice and saying oh no thank you as he pushes away the advertisement but agnes she's having a little trouble and there's this video game trying to play with her and fight with her and she's like how do i get this off of me what do i do what, what's happening and Rios and Rafi see this as a comical moment and saying, well, the only way that the advertisement will go away is if you punch it and tell it to leave you alone. So she musters up enough courage and she punches it away. And they all have a nice little laugh because she's never experienced something like that. There is a very intimate scene of Agnes looking at playback of a video. And it's her and Bruce sharing an intimate moment. He's making cookies and she can't understand why he he doesn't just replicate the cookies and he says well you know when it's replicated it really doesn't taste the same and we see that they share a very endearing kiss so that lets the audience know that they weren't just colleagues but they have a history and they loved each other so that's something that we can take in our minds and going wow this relationship was deeper than we thought Rafi finds Bruce and she says, you know, we, I know where he is, but unfortunately he's being held because he's some sort of support and he's being held against his will. He's doing all of these jobs and all of these things. And it's by somebody named um, Bajasil. And we automatically see that seven of nine, her ears go up and her interest and her eyes open. And she says, huh, Bajasil, mm. I know who that is. She gets Borgs and she sells all the parts and she's on the been on the list for Rangers for a while. And the team is looking at her like, oh, you know, OK. And they're starting to look at different ways that maybe they can buy him or trade him out. But they're saying, man, you know, we can't compete with these other bidders and these other buyers. We don't have enough money. There's nothing we could do. I don't think there's a way where we can kind of play this this game or this deal to get them back. And Seven of Nine makes the suggestion that, you know, we might have to make a trade. We'll have to trade something. And they're all thinking about, okay, what's the plan B? I mean, how are we going to do this? And Seven of Nine says, we can trade something. It could be me. 
Rafi explains to the crew that Rios and Picard are going to have to have to go in as facers. And facers are people on free cloud that are sure of themselves. They have a lot of confidence. They got the money to do whatever they need to do. They have what it takes to make trades. But you have to be aware of Vop. Vop is somebody who can smell lies, literally. And he can even tell what you have for dinner and even who you had sex with. So she's telling them, we have to think of a plan. This is the plan to make sure that you're not spotted and to, if something goes on, how to get out of this situation. So we see a series of scenes of hypotheticals of what to do and what not to do while trying to make this trade. Rafi inserts beta blockers into Rios because this will slow down Vop's ability to maybe sense a lie. She wants him to know that when you go in, make sure that you show the hologram of all the parts that are included, all of the things that may catch his interest to pull him in. Also, she's worried about Picard. She's not really worried about Rios, but she's worried about Picard fitting in. But she goes through all of these series of things Things for him to do. Don't seem too overconfident. Don't seem too scared. Make it known that you know what you're doing, that you want to make this trade. What you have is very valuable. So make sure that you play your cards right. And also she gives Rios this transporter. So just in case they need to dip out very quickly, they can do that. Everyone is going to tackle this mission except for Agnes. She is going to stay behind to make sure that everyone is transported back. She wants them to know that before you do the trade, you must demand to know that Bruce is alive. So you're not getting a trade that's not worth your while. Rafi has bags and she's prepared to go somewhere else on Stardust. She wants to go to the medical district area of stardust and she has her bag and she's telling picard be safe follow those lines remember everything that i said be calm follow the script word for word don't mess up because she really has something she needs to do it's this energy of okay i've brought you this far i've sacrificed enough of my time now i need to go handle something and it's evident that she wants to go see that same Gab Gab gabriel wang that she saw on her screen and picard bids her well and gives the permission for Rios to beam her to where she needs to go. Rafi makes it to the reproductive health services on Stardust. And when she comes to the area, we see there's a young man sitting on the couch. He's in a waiting room. And when she approaches him, she seems very happy and excited. And we can see from her body language that it's been a while since she sees him. She's excited, but when he sees her, he's not too happy and he's not too, too pleased. And he says, wow, <laughs> here? And she tells him, yes, I found you and I just wanted to see you. He said, found me. So you've been looking for me? She says, yes, I was looking for you and, and I'm here. And he tells her immediately that you went on so many missions. You did so much, but you left dad and I alone for so long that when you would come back, you weren't even recognizable. So now I'm supposed to be happy pretty much that you've just popped back into my life just to say hi. And Rafi says something that's really cr critical. She says, my life is back on track. I'm clean. I'm getting my life right. So we know that she had some addiction problems in the past and there was some things that she was trying to sort out individually. And she says, I really want to be here. I want to let you know that despite everything else in the past, I'm here now and I want to make things right for my grand. And he says to her, it's a girl. And Rafi has this moment of, wow, I know that my future grandchild will be a girl. And as they're talking, he's telling her all of these things that he's so angry about and which he has every right to tell her that you were gone. And the punch to the gut is when he says, you know, it really sucked to be your kid and that hurt Rafi to the core. But she's not angry and she's not lashing out because she's getting the verbal smackdown that she knew and had a feeling was coming. As they're talking, a young lady comes out of the office and he tells her, hi, 
you know, how are you feeling? He grabs her, the small of her back and holds her hand and says, this is my mother. She had a second to come see us. And Rafi sees the sarcasm behind that, but she doesn't fight it. And she says, well, hello, I'm glad that I was able to see you. And he interrupts her and says, but she has to go. He's pushing that energy of hi, you came, you saw us. Now we got to go. And he leaves with her and Rafi has had a beat down emotionally seeing him again. But now we know Rafi, a little bit more of Rafi's backstory with constantly being on missions, trying to do her job, but at the same time, having this con and negative experience of not really being there with her son, her husband, and now not being involved with her son and her future in-law and granddaughter. Picard and everyone, they are trying to be convincing in their getup that this is a good trade, that wow, look at all of the parts that she has, look at everything that you can sell. And Bajazel is looking at Seven of Nine and she's turning her head and she's studying her. She goes, huh, that's really interesting. It's good to see you, Annika. And Picard looks at Seven of Nine and Seven of Nine is looking at Bajazel and she's telling her, yes, you know, it's me. And she says, wow, the board that got away, you know, we had you contained for so, so long, but somehow, some way you were able to escape. And Picard literally says, what the hell is going on? He's really upset that she's left out a lot of things. It was evident that Seven of Nine wanted to go back and see this specific person for a reason. And she says that her dear friend that was with Starfleet was tortured. She sells parts. She did all of that to him and not even with any anesthesia. I saw this person as my son and they do these to, to so many people taking their parts and selling it and she says you know what you take this and you go on without me meanwhile Rios is at the bar and he has his sound piece and he's telling Agnes hey we're in a situation it's unsafe get ready for my green light because we might have to get out of here it's time to go it's time to go and seven of nine is not trying to hear it Picard is trying to give her the 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 positive angel on the shoulder telling her let's be diplomatic about this murder and revenge is just a path that just keeps going and going and going think about what you're doing if you kill her then th this will be a continuous thing then there'll be people looking for you she's not trying to hear it she says you go ahead and I'll stay here with her we see that Agnes is on the ship. She's panicking. She can barely breathe. She's pacing back and forth. And the hospitality hologram notices it and says, hey, you have an increased heart rate. You, you're, you're sweating. Is everything okay? She's like, I, I'm okay. I'm good. I, I got this. He's like, but I'm noticing that you're having some issues. She says, I, I got this. Just leave me alone. And she pushes away the, the, the hospitality hologram. She doesn't want anything to do with him, but she looks like she's about to have a panic attack. B says, okay this is what compromise we can do you release me and give me my life and we'll give you Bruce that will be the trade but Picard of course he wants to know if he's okay if he's alive at this point and they agreed to make that that trade they then once they have Bruce they go ahead and they transport back to the ship and Agnes of course receives this the signal transports them on the ship and she is floored to see bruce they're holding bruce though they're helping him get onto the ship but what's interesting is she is just in shock standing there and picard said he's he's fine he's alive but he's extremely dehydrated and he needs medical help they have worn him out seven of nine she's not trying to hear it but picard of course picard is upset because she left out a lot of stuff and they could have been killed they could have been placed in danger because seven of nine had a mission she was focused she knew that she wanted to go back there and see that lady from everything that she experienced being captured her friend being tortured and murdered and she says I know that you got a lot going on and I don't want to go any further with you I helped you out all I need is two tasers and Picard knows that 
She wants to do her ranger thing. She can't be contained. He can't tell her what to do. And he says, okay. And he gives her two tasers and she is on her way to do what she wants to do. Then we see seven of nine. She returns to Bejazel and she says, Oh, hi. We then see a lot of people teleport out of there. They are getting out of the way. They can tell something is about to go down. And of course, I'm gonna call her BJ. Of course, BJ is just like, wow, I didn't think that you would come back so soon. And Seven of Nine lets her know, I know Picard is very diplomatic. He's the voice of reason, but I'm here. And it's obvious she wants to take her revenge. She believes that this is her justice. She believes that this is something that will give her peace and vengeance for her friend. And she lets her know you tortured him. And then you tortured me. I was once that person that thought that things could be worked out. And BJ says, even though that's not her full name, we'll just call her BJ for short. She says, yeah, you were once that way until I contained you. And now look how you evolved. Now look at you. And seven of nine looks at her and says, yes, look at me. And she points the taser to her and says, you're stalling. I know that you've called your second round of security. That's fine because I don't need long. And she proceeds to wipe her out with that taser and take her out. Her security comes in and she shoots her way out of there like Scarface. Okay, she's not playing any games and she is taking her revenge which might not be a good thing, but I really think seven of nine at that point, I don't think she cares. Bruce is in sick bay with Picard and he's speaking with him and offset to the side from the camera angle. We can see that Agnes is reviewing some things as well. And Picard says, you know, wow, I just, you're here, we have you. I just want you to know that you're, you're sick, you're dehydrated, but if you rest, we need you to get well. And he inquires about Dodge and Picard lets him know that unfortunately Dodge is not with us anymore, but we're trying to figure out everything that's going on. And Bruce with all his might is trying to get out these words to talk to Picard. And he says, this is why I made them. This is why I sent Dodge to earth. And Picard wants to know about the other one. Where is she located? Where is the other twin? And he barely lets it out that Soji, she is actually located on the artifact, the Borg cube. And Picard says, why would you send them there? Why do you, I don't understand. And he says that I just suspect some really strange things. And Picard says, you know, Romulans, the, 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 all of that. And he's like, it's just, I think it's more than, this, than, than Romulans and all this other stuff. I really think that the Federation has some dirty things going on too. Picard insists that he gets more rest and he of course wants to talk about this more, but he needs him clear headed. He needs him level headed so he can get all of that information on a clear head. Picard leaves, Picard leaves for him to get a little bit more rest. And Agnes seems deep in thought and she has a behavior, which is really, really weird. And she walks up to him to observe him and he's just looking at her in bliss and he's happy and he says, oh, Aggie. And he's happy to see her and she's in tears and she says, if only you knew what I knew. I wish you knew what I knew. And he's really confused and trying to figure out why she keeps repeating the same thing over and over again. And then we have a pivotal moment. The music changes, the tone changes. And she types in something that changes his healing process. And it's beginning to make his heart rate do something really, really strange. And we can see that it's even harder for him to breathe. And even the hospitality hologram pops up and says, what you're doing is going to cause him organ failure. What are you doing? And she's still typing in things and she tells him to go away. And we do see that, that Bruce is finding it harder and harder to breathe. And she's crying and she's watching him suffocate and she's watching him die. And she's not moving. She's allowing this to happen. She is literally killing Bruce and she's telling him, I wish you knew what I knew. I can't let this go any further. And he is looking at her dying, looking into her eyes until we have the last moments of breath. 
and Bruce dies. Agnes has killed him. And that is the end of the episode. Make sure you come back next week for episode six. What did you think about this episode? Wow, what a pivotal turn. Make sure to check out my review in the comments and also subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts and also follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, officialbun underscore E. See you next week. Bye.